Hey everyone, welcome to Rationable. Thank you so much for joining us. Today I have a person on for an amazing interview, but someone who I have been actually been quite an admirer of. Not for a very long time because I've just recently discovered his YouTube channel and his his podcast, but this is definitely going to be a very interesting conversation. Vimo, welcome to Rationable. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Abhijit. The pleasure is all mine. I have always had this problem with really educating myself about Indian religions because such a vast amount yeah. of material out there is based on, on Christian worldviews and on now becoming more frequently Muslim worldviews. Yeah. Where a lot of ex-Muslims are making mm. a lot of content to yeah. educate people about the, the problems with the religion. But it's very rare to find an equivalent for Hinduism, which... Anyways, Hinduism is very hard to find. So I'd love to hear how you would define it. Yeah, I run into the same problem. And I have seen Western atheists struggle with this so much that when I started doing this, I figured that I really need to come up with a way to actually deal with this because Hinduism tends to be slippery. Exactly. Right? You cannot come to any single conclusion about it. You talk to a person and you say, hey, this belief is wrong. And he'll say, I don't believe in it. And he will have 10 other beliefs which you hadn't heard of till now. Yeah, right? exactly. So the main reason I do the live stream is because I cannot deal with this stuff by making YouTube videos about, okay, so today we are going to debunk Hinduism. It cannot be done. You cannot have 10 reasons Hinduism is false because there are only 20 people who say, I don't agree with any of these 10 reasons. And here are 25 more reasons that you need to debunk. You'll be spending your lifetime doing that. <laughs> so what I do is just whoever channel. comes, I ask them, what do you believe and why? Mm. And I start there. Then there is no scope for ambiguity because it's a direct face-to-face -face conversation. So even if it's a Hindu who has incorporated a little bit of Abrahamic thought into it, even if it's a Christian who believes that he's actually Hindu, even if it's someone who says, I have no religion, but the universe is conscious. I just start there. Okay, that is a belief. Let's go step by step through it. I but, think that is the best way to do it. Yeah, that's a that's a very good strategy, definitely. But is Hinduism a religion from your perspective? I It's too big a question. And I give a simple answer saying if I pick up a government form in the list of religions, as Hinduism mentioned, if it is, then it's a religion. Oh, that's... that's your philosophical big, big sophistication big. can go <laughs> F itself. If it's a religion, according to a... Like if I go out and ask someone, hey, what's your religion? They say Hindu. I would say... Ah, but what do you mean by religion? Is it Advaita Vedanta? Is it Charvak school? Is it Nirishwarvad? Nobody does that. As far as normal people and normal conversations are concerned, it's a religion. And that's what I go by. If someone wants to talk about the nuances of it, I'm happy to do it. But come on my live stream and do it. Ah, because I, I'm honestly, I have met people who have basically said Hinduism isn't a religion. Those it, are diversions. It, Those are diversions I, designed no. for uh, a Western audience. No, but I, that's fine. But I'm talking about my own friends who I'm like, yeah, Hinduism. Yeah, but you and I will also count as Westernized, right? Yeah, relatively. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Urban, yeah. Western, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. So they said it's a life philosophy. I'm like, listen, you have certain supernatural beings that most people believe in who represent the part of Hinduism that they have. And they spend a significant amount of their time and money investing in praying to those supernatural beings and asking them for things that you just like you would for any god. There are many gods. Mm -hmm. There are places where those gods are worshipped. There are forms in which those gods are worshipped. And that's what makes it a religion. But it is very slippery. I'll give you that. It's yeah, it's been as slippery. I think several layers of oil are applied on it on an everyday basis. Well, it's not naturally slippery. It is maintained as slippery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which makes it very hard to define and very hard to refute in very specific terms. In general terms, yeah, it is hard to refute. In general terms, I suppose any religion will be hard to refute, but it is easier when it is Abrahamic because there are some foundations to it. God exists. There's yeah. a prophet or a son of God. And if you don't believe in them, your claim to that religion is significantly reduced. Exactly. You can have, like Islam has the Ahmadiyya sect or Shia and Sunnis are there. Christianity has broken up so many times. There are like uncountable numbers of churches just across America. Forget the world. Exactly. And Hinduism is the same. But there are fewer foundational claims in Hinduism. And scriptures. Yeah, yes, that's true. There's an attempt to make the Bhagavad Gita and some, into some kind of central scripture. But that is also not true. Because there are many Hindus who will completely reject the Bhagavad Gita and still continue to call themselves Hindu. Yeah, and there are so many of these. There's the Bhagavad Gita, there's the Upanishads, there are the Vedas. Which is, which a lot of people say that is the center of Hinduism. But it's... Most of them have not read them. Exactly. And <laughs> he's going to sit through and read every single word of those things. No, I'm saying even the people who propose uh, these books are the foundations yeah. of the religion have not read them. 
the other day on my live stream by the way it's a funny incident the other day on my live stream somebody came and said the bhagavad gita mentions the stratosphere and the layers of the atmosphere mm-hmm. how do you answer that i said okay where did you find this out he sent me a graphic and the graphic says the krishna krishna says this chapter and verse i said okay let's open the chapter and verse chapter and verse was not about that it was something else entirely and i said do you think this mentions the atmospheric levels he said no okay bye <laughs> there are ran- there is random stuff floating around where people are uh-huh. talking about quantum physics and atmosphere and any time science finds something there is a small cottage industry which starts making memes oh. and assigning random chapter and verse to bhagavad gita and yeah. it's not even there but how does one like for example you take me i haven't read any of the religious texts i haven't even I haven't managed to get past Genesis in the Bible let alone mm-hmm. because that in itself is so densely nonsensical that it just it boggled my mind I was like dude I can't do this right now but for people for atheists among us who want to educate themselves more and become more knowledgeable on the Hindu religion what can they look for what are the books they can read what are the websites they can go to what would you recommend I don't know what I can recommend but I do think that it is important to study my advice would be to whatever extent it is possible for you to engage with a religion do to whatever extent it is possible to engage with people who want to tell you that the religion is true do but always do it on a case by case basis because you will you'll still run into people who say the bhagavad gita is amazing and they have not read it or i sometimes like my favorite thing is i just ask people tell me who the father of the pandavas were and the common answer might be pandu but they had five like every single one of them came from a different father and all the fathers were gods so <laughs> if someone is unable to answer that basic question I ceased conversation. I said, you need to learn more about your own religion before you can teach me to follow it. Because I have run a YouTube channel for two years, which is devoted to mythology. I've written a comic book series, which is based on Hindu mythology. I need to understand that we are on the same level as far as knowledge of all this is concerned before I can start conversing. But I would recommend a book by Ambedkar called Riddles in Hinduism. In fact, at some point, I think I should make a book list for Indian atheists. I have tried to do it in a broken way many times. There is a book by Meghna Desai called Who Wrote the Bhagavad Gita? I would encourage people to make a clear distinction between books written by Hindus for white people and books written by people who have been on the oppressed side within Hinduism about Hinduism those are the books we should go for the books written by dalit bahujan adivasi authors about hinduism are the places where indian atheists should start as far as reading about religion is concerned Mm-hmm. and of course i would also recommend that you people read the quran the bible and the bhagavad gita because these get thrown around the most like sometime ago there was this proposal right should there be a religious study class in schools i think there should be but as long as it is taught like a religious study class and people don't start using it for preaching it should be taught by religious scholars it should be taught by people who are scholars of comparative religion not priests from any religion because exactly. that will just mess it up and you need to teach every religion separately and and equally given equal weightage to everything yeah. i mean we have had comparative religious studies uh, as courses in universities for quite some time maybe a school version of it can be prepared if that is what is done i'm totally in favor of it because somebody was asking me some time ago how do you bring up an atheist child and my answer was i wouldn't why would i bring up a child an atheist i would bring up the child as a human being whatever they choose to believe is up to them my duty as a parent would be to expose them to all kinds of thoughts so i would tell them about hinduism christianity islam but also that there are people who don't believe in any of it most Absolutely. people become prisoners of their religion because they are not exposed to anything else and that is what you should fight you should expose them to more things and most people will make their own decisions absolutely and as so many skeptics and atheists personalities in the us have said you have to teach people not what to think but yeah, how but to how to think exactly and in fact for for quite a long time my youtube channel banner just had those words how to think ah that's nice i honestly i did consider that as one of the logos as yeah. one of the models <laughs> for <laughs> rationable as well because i honestly i i feel that the teaching of critical thinking and comparative religion and the openness to different cultures those kind of values should be taught starting from school from preschool even from in very basic forms just to educate people but i think that uh, the powers that be which are governmental and educational institutions i think would be very resistant towards of towards oh absolutely there will be because that's why the internet matters so much exactly so here we are <laughs> we doing yeah. can yeah. on the internet to educate as many people as we can you've been doing this for the last couple of years yeah you think you've made a dent have you changed any minds yet if by any minds you mean more than one then yes ah nice a lot of people who come on my live stream are actually not atheists they're religious people who find some merit in the way i talk about religion so they come 
and i would like to think that i'm making small dents all, all over the place it is never it is almost never possible to have a conversation with a religious person and the conversation ends and they give up their religion like my goal with whenever i talk to people is that this is a conversation starter mm-hmm. this is where we are i understand your point of view i hope you understand mine come back and if they find the experience stimulating enough they will come back and in four or five meetings maybe they will start thinking something but and if they don't that's still okay because the content of our conversation is online and other people can watch it and maybe they will think something yeah i have noticed that your the way you converse with your callers it has a kind of a socratic quality to it so you have the socratic method otherwise known as street epistemology just epistemology and the way yeah. that he has been promoted by anthony Mag- magnabosco magnabosco yeah i'm a huge fan of his work and i try to base my approach to conversations on his i actually recently got the book that he was inspired by which is a manual for creating atheists yeah i've read that <laughs> yeah so i'm reading that right now and i'm trying to sharpen my methods or not sharpen because that sounds rude i'm trying to make my method more effective Mm. because usually it just becomes i recommend that you read this book acha i recommend that you read that book the <laughs> authors of those books are having a proxy discussion through us we are not talking to each other exactly. whenever someone sends me a link in fact i have banned links on my youtube comments mm. if you want to make an argument you are going to have to use your own words because it's very easy to throw a link at someone it's very easy to you go read these five books yeah like he's going to nobody is <laughs> going to do it they're going to throw the books at yeah. him and feel smug and he's <laughs> going to ignore you completely and no no gain is going to be made talk Absolutely. to each other that's my point actually this have to have the conversations yeah but uh, as a recommendation <laughs> recommend a book oh, good timing by the way <laughs> exactly so peter <laughs> bogosian who wrote a man uh, creating atheists has made a sequel which is much less controversial because it's not just about a manual for creating atheists it's called how to have impossible conversations if that's, i remember uh, Ma- Anthony Magnum Bosco I think at some point in an interview I remember maybe it was him or someone else he said this book should not have been called how to create an atheist be called how to create doubt yeah. absolutely i found the book the name of the book was very objectionable but he did still read it but i yeah. find the 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 sequel that he's done a much better job of clarifying and it's not just about atheism he's talking about any kind of conversation yeah. it can be political it can be about just basic beliefs about ghosts or I'll you know, definitely get my hands on this book yeah, because yeah. that's the first thing that I noted was that the book is black and on it says in red how to create an a-. it sounds like that book that the scarlet witch is holding in the mcu <laughs> like yeah. ah, ha, 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 i shall now create an atheist but that dark. sort of thing is happening the dark hole yeah like the book that if religious people touch it they burst into flames or something it's not very helpful okay so now for people who have just been introduced to you where can they find you where where can they get in touch how they can they get onto your calls my youtube live stream is vimo live it's at youtube.com slash at vimo live and my youtube channel where i mostly post shorts and occasionally a video is youtube.com slash vimo so slash vimo and slash vimo live are the two youtube things i have you can come subscribe to either of them and we'll talk on youtube i go live on Wednesdays at 9:30 p.m. and Saturdays at 9:30 p.m. It usually happens for one hour, one and a half hours, or mm-hmm. two hours at max. But we take callers. People call in. We just talk about what they believe in, and it's these are chill conversations. Occasionally, some fun emerges from it, but yeah. mostly it's interesting. As that's what I've been told. And if you want to listen to the audio transcripts of these, you can just find Vimo Live on Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Gana.com, any audio platform, and search for Vimo Live, V I M O H L I V E. and the podcast subscribe to the podcast or listen to it wonderful are you also on any social media like twitter still and yeah i am on instagram but i got a threat last week that my account may be deleted because i used the word brahminism oh. cuz apparently that's hate speech so wow. no it's not hate speech but instagram is hand in glove with certain nefarious people <laughs> in power so we shall drop it if you want to you can follow me on instagram i post shorts there also reels rather ah, uh, cool. my handle is vimo v i m o h and the same on twitter wonderful Yeah. In fact, I don't even join in any web service if I can't get the username Vimo. <laughs> That's good. That's a good way to do it. I have unfortunately I have compromised multiple times in rational, <laughs> be rational in most places because apparently there's another rational out there. I don't know who wow. it is. But yeah, it's very heartbreaking. You come up with a brilliant name. I'm sure nobody has it and then turns out 20 people have it. Exactly. And rational.com, I was searching for that all over the place. Apparently it's not available and it's for sale for some few thousand dollars yeah i made that Somebody mistake i had vimo.com i uh, let it go because i was not getting any traffic and now it costs a few lakhs 
So I have Vimo.in, where my podcast website is, www.vimo.in. Thank you so much, Vimo, for being on Rational. It's been an amazing conversation. I'm sure we'll have many more. We'll have yep. more. Discuss- Thanks, Abhijit. Thank you very much. See you on your podcasts and uh, I'll... Catch you later. Thanks everyone for joining in. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching this video. If you want to find out more, if you want to listen to the podcast, you can go to berationable.com and you can subscribe to the podcast on any podcasting service. And thanks, Avijit. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. See ya.